Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. Now today we'll look at the Ambry AR869 handheld transceiver, which in all accounts is the same radio as the Radtail RT490. It covers four different bands in which it can transmit and receive, plus it has airband and FM broadcast receive capabilities. Now transmit support is between 137 to 174, 220 to 260, 350 to 390, and then 400 to 520 megahertz. So this radio can not only be used on ham radio, but also commercial frequencies too. Now this version has Bluetooth and GPS installed. However, you can purchase this radio without Bluetooth and GPS for around $15 less. Now at the time of recording this video, this radio was around 90 US dollars from the Banggood website. Now in the box, we have the usual accessories, a mains powered desktop charger, a user's manual, which is actually in English and covers quite a lot, a dual band antenna, which on the bottom states it covers from 136 to 174 megahertz, and then 400 up to 470 megahertz. Now the removable rechargeable battery does not appear to show any capacity information, but the specification on the seller's website states that the battery has a 4,800 milliamp hour capacity. You can see that the chassis of the Abri 869 is made from metal, and this really shows when holding this radio in your hand, it feels extremely sturdy and quite robust. The battery itself does have a USB-C socket on the bottom rear, with a charging status LED next to the socket. Now this makes charging this battery much more convenient, as charging can be performed from devices like power banks, or even your computer's USB port. The keypad buttons are slightly raised and have a rubber feel to them, clicking quite loudly as each button is pressed. Now on the left side of the radio, we find a large PTT button, along with two reprogrammable function buttons just below. Now these can be changed in software to activate features like FM broadcast radio and change power levels quite quickly. Now on the right side of the radio, we have a cover held in via an easily removable screw. Now this exposes the speaker mic port, which also doubles up as a programming port. On the top of the radio, we find the antenna socket alongside an orange push button and two rotary controls. Now one is for changing channels or frequency, and the other is the on and off or volume control. There's also a status LED located near the rotary controls which shows when you're receiving and transmitting. Now the Abri 869 can monitor two frequencies at the same time, with VFO A and then VFO B just below, as shown on the screen. You can have these two VFOs set to memory mode or VFO mode independently, or vice versa. Now the menu system is extremely familiar, and we've seen this style in many radios like this before. There's no real special features that jump out, but all of the settings are there if you need to change something quickly and on the fly. The P1 and P2 buttons on the front are used for changing the main VFO, i.e. the transmitting VFO between the top and the bottom one, along with changing from frequency mode to memory channel mode. Now, as mentioned before, this radio has the GPS feature built in, and to show the GPS information, this has to be enabled within menu. And once enabled, you can press the right arrow button on the keypad to show the GPS details. Now, GPS information is displayed quite quickly. However, it was not accurate at first. It took a good five minutes to provide the real details. Now, maybe this was because I was testing this feature inside my office, whereby outside and in clearer view of the GPS satellites, it maybe would have been a lot quicker. Now opening up my local 70 centimeter repeater seems to work with a breeze and no issues. Now unfortunately, as always, there was no one around to talk to. Now testing the transmitted audio sounds like this. This is uh, M0 DKW testing audio on the Ambry 869 AR869. M0 DQW testing audio. Let's now test the RF power output of the Ambry AR869. Now on two meters at 145 megahertz, we see an output power of just over five watts. That's pretty impressive to see a handheld output at least five watts these days. On 70 centimeters, we see an RF output of just over four watts. And on a 1.25 meter band, we also see an output power 
of nearly 6 watts. Now all these tests were performed with a fully charged battery and incidentally I used the USB socket for charging it. Let's take a quick look at the transmitted signal quality. Here we can see that on 2 meters the second harmonic is almost as high as the fundamental. Now this is really not good. We can also prove this to be the case by tuning my SDR to the second harmonic frequency and start transmitting. This is uh, M0 DQW, M0 DQW testing audio on the Avery AR869, transmitting on 145.450. However, on 70 centimeters at 435 megahertz, the second harmonic is way down there much better than we saw on the 2 meter handband. Now the harmonics don't actually look too bad on the 1.25 meter band either, with the second harmonic around 35 dB down from the fundamental. Now the AR869 also supports airband radio reception, so let's take a listen on the airband and see how well this works. Airband receive actually sounds rather good, definitely better than some radios that I've reviewed in the past. Again though, scanning is pretty slow, so having specific airband frequencies stored in memory would be better. Now when it comes to programming, there are two options. The first option was to use Chirp. However, Chirp didn't appear to natively support the Radtel 490 or the Abri 869. So from their file section, I downloaded a developer module. With the RT90 module loaded, I was then able to read and write to the Abri AR869. Now another option for programming is to use a mobile application. Now this mobile application is available for both Android and iOS. Links for these apps can be found on the seller's main advert. Now I'll link below for those that are interested. The app uses Bluetooth BLE, so make sure to have Bluetooth enabled on the radio before trying this way of programming. But once connected, you can read and write to the radio. All features and functions can be edited within the app, along with the memory channels. So that's the Abri AR A69 or Radtel 490. Now overall, it's a pretty decent radio with decent power levels on each of the supported bands. GPS and Bluetooth features are also a nice touch. Now it's just a shame that the spurious transmissions that we saw on the 2 meter band was so bad. I have no idea why any manufacturer would be happy selling a radio that has great features, works okay on most bands, but then fails miserably when transmitting at 145 megahertz. Of course, there is a possibility that there's a fault with this particular radio. Maybe a wrong component was fitted for the 2 meter filter section. Now if you have one of these radios or even the Radtel 490 and you also have the ability to test its RF output then please let us all know down in the comments your results. Anyway until the next video stay safe thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.